Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video, it's another bonus video for the Express Mongo build. And in this video, what I want to do is just show you guys how to do like, how to kind of use EJS to your advantage in the sense of like doing like, first we'll talk about conditional styling and then ways you can kind of inject data into your front end JavaScript via uh, EJS. So we'll show all of this. So first, conditional CSS. Like, let me just go to a page. Let me actually first like make a branch for this. So, um, git checkout dash b feature slash uh, ejs magic. We'll call it. Okay, so this way when you guys look at the repo, link in the video description, you can look at the different branches to kind of see like the state of the project at different points during these, these videos. Um, okay, cool. So we'll just, let me just run the server. I oh, will actually probably need to start my Mongo server so it doesn't complain. So sudo, um, sudo mongod. There we go. We have our Mongo server running because I have a, a local server running. Uh, just so that way I don't have to keep redoing my, my username and password for that, that temporary username and password. So that way, um, okay. So cool. NPM run dev. Okay. So that's running. And then we'll put this here on the side. So let's head over to localhost 3000. Cool. Okay, and let's do something here. Okay, what I want to do is that if I'm logged in and I'm on this main page, what I wanted to do is, you know, basically show a different color. Like let's say make this sign up and login form green. Okay, so what we will do is in my EJS, well, first I got to go look for that route. So server main.route. Main, the main route, the main page, slash, here we go. This is the, the route for the main page. Okay, what I want to want to do is I'm going to want to change that function. So that's going to be my controller. So that's going to be in the unauth controller. And we are looking for the, the main function right here. And we're going to pass it some data. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to pass it we'll just say logged in will be the name of the variable and it'll equal the very the, the value of rec dot session dot logged in so either it's going to be true or false okay and one way we can do this is we can use that boolean in our ejs so i can be like um What's the main page? Main page right here. So again, that's going to be in these H1s. So actually technically in these H2s. So then what I'll do is I'll write class equals, then I'll write the quotation marks, and then I'll use like a ternary operator in EJS to come up with the results. So we'll just say, hey, logged in. If logged in is true using a ternary operator, then I'm going to want to add the class logged in. Actually, we'll just call it logged. Be the name of the class. Keep it simple. And otherwise, we'll just not put anything there. Okay. And that's that. But again, we want to make sure I close the EJS brackets there. And there we go. And I'll just copy the same thing for the H2 here. So now what happens? Now let's like actually create that class in our CSS. And we'll just say dot logged. If something is dot logged, its color then becomes purple. Okay, cool. So right now, uh, that turned purple. Not that wasn't intended. Am I logged in? Let me check it. Maybe I might still be logged in. Slash to do. Oh, I guess I am still logged in. So that's why it was purple. Okay, so if I click on log out, you see now the colors are black. 
Now, if I go back, if I log back in, Alex Merced, cheese, click login. Okay, you are on the edit page. Okay, and now I go back to the main page as I'm logged in. You can see it's purple. So you see, like, when a certain condition is met, um, the, the class changes, which changes the styling. So that's all that is. Now, I could do that here. So you saw I did that in the the uh, EJS. I did the ternary operator. I could just as easily do that in the route. So I could go back to this main controller route and instead do something like this. Um, I mean, on auth controller. And instead do something like this, like rec.session.logged in. And then just put the word in there, like here, logged null. And do it here, which is probably the better idea. So this way, if I have the logic kind of taken care of here in my route, then I can go back to my EJS file. And instead of having to put all the logic in the EJS file, I could just put the variable logged in, and the lo logged in will either equal nothing or it will equal the right class. And this ends up in the same place. Okay, and again, if I log out, so let's go back to slash to do. Okay, and then I log out. And it works. And if I log back in, geez. Okay, and go back to the main page. Now that I'm logged in, it's purple. Okay, but see, like that's a lot more succinct because the variable already has the class name in it, and I did the conditionals within the controller function. Either way works. I generally think keeping any of the data logic in the function makes a lot more sense because then the more logic you run in your EJS file, the, the more cluttered it becomes. So you always want to kind of like, like uh, keep an eye on that. So that is one thing. Another thing we can do is like, let's say I wanted to make that, have that variable available to my front end JavaScript. What I could do here is I could do something like this. I could do script. Because again, EJS runs, the all that EJS code in the template runs before it hits the user's browser. So again, so the EJS code runs backend. So it's going to run first, turn into HTML, and then the HTML gets sent to the client browser, and then the JavaScript runs, the front-end JavaScript. So the script tag wouldn't run until after the, all the EJS stuff gets processed. Um, but if I do this, I can create a variable. So let's say const um, logged in equals, and then I can use EJS to inject the variable that I have in my template and be just like, okay, this is going to equal logged in. Okay, and see, so it's going to complain because again, it doesn't realize this is an EJS file and it's going to get pre processed. But I do that, and then I can do something like this like alert logged in. Okay, and let's see if that works. So if I refresh the page, uh, why you don't like that? Let's say if. I need to refresh the page, I think. Oh, I did refresh the page. Let me do a, a hard refresh. The const logged in equals... Okay, let's take a look at DevTools. See what we got back. Um, where's the rest of DevTools? There we go. Sources... Index. Ah, because see, it shows up as like a variable. I have to put the quotation marks around it. Ha, okay, makes sense. So what I want to do is put quotation marks around this because I want the text to appear in the in there. There we go. Okay, because it just injects raw text. So it doesn't know that I, I meant it to be a string, not like a variable name. So if I do this, save, and I go back over here, let me just close this little window here and move this back to the side. I refresh the page and see I get alert that I'm logged in. Okay, now if I were to sign out, so let me go back to slash to do. And then I'm going to log out. See, now I get null. Okay, so the idea is I can, I can do stuff like that too. So if I need to inject data, now one thing you can't do is I can't inject like a whole object or an array. 
Okay, because technically, if you were to try to like inject an object or an array as a string, you get this like object object kind of thing, because the object itself is not something that is a string. Um, what you can do, so let's say I wanted to do that. Like, let's just do show an example. Um, so let's go back to unauth controller. And let's say I want to add another property to the data that I'm sending over. So we'll just call this obj. And I want to send over the data that I want to send over. So we'll say like Alex um, name Alex Merced. Okay, like that. What I can do, okay, is I could go over here and say like const obj. So I can't do this. I can't be like, okay, this equals percentage equals obj. That's not going to work. But let's just show you what happens if you do that. Okay, and then I'll just console log. Actually, I won't even bother because it's probably going to error. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this page. Okay, yep, so it's definitely there. Because we didn't see the alert. But if I go in here, see what you get? You get this object, object. Whenever you try to, like, because, again, EJS, what it's doing is just taking the variable and injecting it as a string. The string of the, the, the string representation of an object or an array is object, object. So that's not going to work. What I can do is I can wrap this in json.stringify to generate a json string. Okay. But that's going to need to be in... But I'm going to want to pass that's going to be a string, so I need that has to be in quotation marks. And I want to turn that into an object, so I need to pass that string to json.parse. And this should work, so we'll find out in a second. Okay. Let's see how it looks like in here. So json.parse. Can I get an error there? Say token and in JSON. So that's string of pi obj. Didn't quite work exactly the way I would have liked. Let me just go over here. Console back to sources. Because we got all these extra characters. So that's not necessarily ideal. Um, yeah, so it gets tricky. It gets tricky. So oftentimes it's better to just assign individual properties to, to you know, it, the, probably the, the ideal way of doing this would have been just saying const name and then just assigning the individual property to it. So I could be like, okay, well, I want to assign a string and the string is going to come from the object. So obj.name. And then that should be totally cool. Okay, and if I look at this, obj.name equals, and that works. So now if I do this, like alert name, and there we go. And now I can actually run front end code with that variable uh, if you really want to do that. Okay, um, you probably will rarely need to do that, but just so you know, that's that's if you need to like sneak in a few variables in your front end JavaScript, that's a way to do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.